Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's Sunday morning here in London. It's a few minutes after nine o'clock, and this is Lizzie and Justin from Third Space, and we are back again. I so love the, that we get to come back again. It's um, our hundredth and first week of doing this. Um, and I know that I'm really, really pleased, Lizzie, that we are here and that we're doing this again. And I want to, as we always do, extend a, a giant and the warmest possible welcome we can to all of you, many of you who've been alongside us, uh, maybe even for 101 weeks. And many of you who've joined us more recently, even if this is the first time that you're with us live, as we always are on a Sunday morning in our Facebook group, which everyone is welcome to join. You can just search for Turning Towards Life. Or um, maybe you're watching us on YouTube or on our website later or on our podcast, which seems to be spreading wildly and wonderfully, which is wonderful. Um, you're really welcome to be with us. And as always, what we've what we have is a, a source, a textual source that we're going to read together that Lizzie's chosen this week that I'm really excited about speaking about, Lizzie. And then we'll dive into the conversation together. And you, if you're listening or watching, you're so welcome to be part of the conversation with us, which we know that you are, even if you don't respond. But on our Facebook group, um, many people do respond with your own thoughts and feelings and comments and questions about what we're talking about, and we, we welcome you there as well absolutely good morning everybody it's a real joy to be here <clears throat> this morning i uh, as justin you were just talking i just get this kind of rising amusement and joy at the sophistication of things of saying we have a podcast and saying we have a live stream and that people can comment and all these things it just makes me amused that we're doing something so proper it's really cool and I feel like we're a radio show or something so we have this little beginning bit where we say the thing and what week we're on and we have a routine and it's a great joy to be feeling that and also in anticipation of this amazing poem as well for me and just feeling the possibility of us reading it together and doing the thing that we do this live and unrehearsed thing of having a conversation with each other and normally people what happens is that justin tells me a little snippet of some goodness that has come from turning towards life before we begin so that kind of makes me feel really happy to to know something else of the way that this is spreading and just has this effect on me of like oh oh we will we have to just keep going then so this is our keeping going for this week, week 101. That's very exciting. And this is a poem by Wendell Berry, which when I read it, I felt so kind of like I'd fallen into a hole of inquiry about all the ways that I don't do what this poem is saying. And it just made me feel even more committed to looking at this in myself. And I thought that it would be a great way to begin a conversation about how to do this and how not to do this. So I'm going to read. This is How to Be a Poet by Wendell Berry. <clears throat> Make a place to sit down. Sit down. Be quiet. You must depend on affection, reading, knowledge, skill. More of each than you have. Inspiration, work, growing older, patience. The patience joins time to eternity. Any readers who like your poems doubt their judgment. Breathe with unconditional breath the unconditioned air. Shun electric wire. Communicate slowly. Live a three-dimensioned life. Stay away from screens. Stay away from anything that obscures the place it is in. There are no unsacred places. There are only sacred places and desecrated places. Accept what comes from silence. Make the best you can of it. Of the little words that come out of the silence, like prayers prayed back to the one who prays, make a poem that does not disturb the silence from which it came. So 
so I'm going to read it too. But I find myself, Lizzie, not wanting to rush into reading it. Isn't it something that the um, technology of screens and wires makes it possible for us to talk about something like this? How yeah. to be a poet. Make a place to sit down. Sit down. Be quiet. You must depend upon affection, reading, knowledge, skill, more of each than you have. Inspiration, work, growing older, patience. For patience joins time to eternity. Any readers who like your poems doubt their judgment. Breathe with unconditional breath, the unconditioned air. Shun electric wire. Communicate slowly. Live a three dimensioned life. Stay away from screens. Stay away from anything that obscures the place it is in. There are no unsacred places. There are only sacred places and desecrated places. Accept what comes from silence. Make the best of it, best you can of it, of the little words that come out of the silence like prayers prayed back to the one who prays. Make a poem that does not disturb the silence from which it came. It's so moving to hear, to read and to hear. I feel really compelled, Justin, to, to talk about the last paragraph of this. And yet it's the most kind of elusive part of the poem for me. It's so beautiful to consider a prayer prayed back to the one who prays and a poem that does not disturb the silence from which it came. And the patience that Wendell Berry is talking about to to receive what's here to receive what wants to come it's so compelling and yet it's the very thing that is so very programmed in my experience to be avoided or ignored <laughs> and yet when I become present to this paragraph and this poem. I can feel the deep, deep draw to that space of reception and wondering and allowing. And I'm so appreciating this invitation that there are things to be done that help us be in receipt of that kind of spaciousness, that kind of patience that is a prerequisite to the receipt of what's ours to bring, whether it's a choice to make or a poem to write or a song to sing or a way of doing something, this kind of spacious realm is such a deep support and yet we're in so many ways running away from this. I think it would be hard 
that we would find ourselves running even if we didn't live in a culture which encouraged us to run yeah yes and that's part of the extraordinary beauty of this i'm going slow lizzie i'm feeling myself being very impacted by reading it and having heard you read to slow and to see what it's like to be in contact with exactly this that you're pointing to in the last paragraph that wendell berry talks about which is the um well, i'll come at it this way i can't remember who i was speaking to this week about the extraordinary phenomenon when we look and this is happening for me right now of course that when we begin a sentence to speak so i'm just drawing on one something so we begin a sentence to speak and unless you're reading from a script or saying something that's wrote that you've said a hundred thousand million times when we start a sentence we don't know the end of it and yet somehow somehow we're able to to begin and to find as we go something coming back to us that as we speak into the empty space has us say sentences that make sense and the reason i'm saying all of this is because i i think that comes from the same place that wendell berry is talking about when we really slow down and pay attention we see that in many ways we don't know where what we are saying and doing exactly comes from but we we behave as if we do and we behave as this in our think in our wider culture as if this phenomenon that something is arising through us as if that weren't the case it's completely invisible that this might be an important maybe even a fundamental central part of what it is to be the kind of beings that we human beings are and so and like you said um when you spoke lizzie there's something that's very easily frightening for us about letting go into the groundlessness of this that actually i don't know exactly where i'm coming from as i speak what's keeping me me what's having things come into the world and it it can be frightening for us to entertain the possibility that there's such a mystery at the heart of things and of course it we've talked about this maybe even a hundred times you know now we're in our hundred and first week that be, because we live in a culture where it, it for many reasons it suits all kinds of things and all kinds of people that we keep going fast it's easy to sell us things it's easy to it's easy to keep us away from our own courage and originality and inspiration and, and um, uniqueness keeps us distracted we keep ourselves distracted we all play this giant part in keeping this great big edifice going when i suppose this is what i'm arriving at whilst i'm speaking here lizzie is what wendell when what wendell berry is pointing to it seems to me is not something other oh there's this one way of living and then wouldn't it be grand if we could spend more time being patient he's pointing at what's here all the time that we don't pay attention to easily and that might also be the source of some of our most compassionate most artful most um healing and sacred words and acts and relationships come from this exactly this yeah I'm feeling it too, this kind of willingness to be in the unordinarily known space. And, and for me, this is what, this, this is turning towards life as an expression of as well. <laughs> because I, I really do arrive here with this feeling that, um, so in the first paragraph, when he says, you must depend on affection, reading, knowledge, skill, more of each than you have. <laughs> it's like there's a way that us being here and being in conversation 
the, the, the comfort to do this and the courage to do this is born of the safety between us. And then from that safety comes what is going to be said, which is not planned or rehearsed or figured out. And so really, it feels beyond to, to, to do this. And yet the beyondness comes forth because we have made a place to sit down. We have been quiet. We have sat down. It's like there's a there's something about the structure that I think Wendell Berry is pointing to as well. That is a is an invitation, a, a cultivation of the possibility for this even happening. And I really appreciate that there's a way to be conscious of doing that, that it might happen. Otherwise, it just feels like it's not possible. So there are things, actions that can be taken that enable us to be in contact with this space that then we just have to arrive in the space we make and be quiet and be patient and then the possibility arises of something coming, something deepening, something a wisdom that we hadn't found before, an idea we hadn't appreciated, a, a move in relationship that we hadn't considered might come forth. So I feel in opened by it as well, like my hope rises in the reading of this because it's really normal and down to earth and a doable thing. And of course, it all feels quite large and undoable in some way, but there are steps in the beginning that feel very doable. And the invitation to slow down and to communicate slowly and breathe, those are really possible, kind, kindly possible things that we can do. And then the allowing and the gift of things coming forth, as you say, is available all the time. And so it's not like anything is really created in a way. It's, it exists and we are linguistic beings that have the capacity to act and put things down on paper or bring things in language out of our mouths and act in certain ways. And out of that spaciousness can come those things and what different things they are. And, and you know, Justin, we've talked about, you know, our habitual self versus a more conscious, aware self so many times. And I feel like this is also an invitation, not only of how to be a poet, but how to be more observant of our patterns, of our habits, of the things that keep us in the same story that we've always been in around things and brings a shard of light into habitual difficult patterns that feel so difficult to move or shift even when we don't want them anymore. And I guess that's why it also makes me feel hopeful because I know, I know this isn't just about being a poet, but there's something about being a poet for me where every poem I've ever written hasn't come from my normal narrative, as it were, which is a kind of fast paced, enthusiastic gobbler of the world I've felt mm. so many times. And in my gobbling and in my consumption and in my getting through life, that's not where poetry comes from. It's not where my my most sane ideas of what to do about something difficult come from. Right. It's a very different space. And I think this is what this is pointing to, which is why it's so moving to me because I feel like in a way, this kind of spaciousness has really changed the whole trajectory of my life, that there is access to this and it's possible and people have helped me and I have helped me to, 
access something different than just what my wild, ravenous personality would do or say or be. It's really something so much in what you said that this is very moving for me. And um, I want to say something about a couple of things, but one is just about people have helped you, people have helped me, and we've helped ourselves and we've helped one another. So the, the enormous hopefulness that there is in this poem that, as you said, comes from seeing that we don't have to only live in our conditioned, habitual ways. And for many of us, exactly what Wendell Berry is saying is the primary primary sort of um, way to go in an opposite way. Because you, you talked about your um, gobbling up life. And I think probably most of us have a way in which we run. It may not look the, the same in every person. So we really can help ourselves and we really can be helped by one another. And I've been wanting to keep on talking about what this practice of turning towards life is with you as part of turning towards life in exactly this way, because I, I think that that's, this is a beautiful expression of the intent to hear and that we're on the 101st week of a long poem that's arising between us. And um, you talked just now, Lizzie, about distinguishing between the habitual self and something else that's deeper. And I, I, I think actually Wendell Berry has some lovely language for this in here that he uses in a slightly different way in the middle verse, breathe with unconditional breath, the unconditioned air. What happens when we start to get in contact with us, with that of us that is less conditioned, less, like you said, we get into habits of knowing ourselves we know ourselves in a particular way and then we kind of fuel it and keep it going and then we can say about ourselves well i am this thing i'm an enthusiastic vibrant fast moving person for me the one that we've talked about lots um that has become so apparent to me recently is that my knowing myself as someone who's very easily afraid i'm starting to see lizzie how I'm doing being afraid. One of the reasons I am afraid so much is because I am an active participant in stoking, fueling, because it's so familiar to me. It's in a way, it's bizarrely, terribly uncomfortably comfortable, which is why this, this line at the, at near the end of accept what comes from silence, I'm finding so powerful because it allows the question, the discernment about is what's coming, where's it coming from? Is this coming from silence or is this coming from my familiarity? And to wonder about all the different kinds of practices that he talks about and ways of attending to ourselves and honoring our own aging and wisdom and history and bodies and all of that so that we can start to discern and start to maybe let go, begin to let go, which I think is a breathing out kind of thing. And start to start to feel what, because many of us don't know what comes from our own silence. And in, um, in the world of Jewish thinking about prayer, I've always thought this is the most amazing thing, the Hebrew word for prayer, Tefillah is a reflexive verb. It's not something you do to something else. You don't pray to something else. You don't pray for something else. You engage in a practice and it loops back on yourself. Like all reflexive verbs are something that you do ultimately to yourself. I've always found that very moving. And here it, here it is right in Wendell Berry's poem that to start to see that out of the silence, from our living, not, not like some random something, because of the very kind of being that we are that's engaged in the world, if we're quiet enough, little words come back that are prayed back to us when we pay attention in the way that you've been saying. And those are the things to trust and not to desecrate them or... Um, chuck them away or to to trust that these tiny things are the 
beginning of her gift that we might know, not know what it is. And at the end of that thought is, and how little we do that, what gifts might come if each of us could find a way to pay attention to them and give them the nourishment they deserve in their coming into the world. Yeah, I feel like what you're talking about, Justin, is us having a relationship with the silence. And just as I have a relationship to you and I say things and you say things and there's this kind of weaving backwards and forwards, you're painting the picture for me of the possibility of how that exists between me and the silence too. Not just between me and people, but I can have a relationship to all kinds of things and I can cultivate a relationship a relationship to all kinds of things, one of them being this realm that I can speak, feel, think, imagine into, and it, it has a response. Like it's not a it's not a one way thing, which is this this reflexive thing. And that life as a reflexive verb is a very beautiful uh, idea right now that is being born here, that I'm in relationship all the time to all kinds of things. And this is a particular invitation into the relationship with silence. And what is there, which is beautifully, miraculously, mysteriously, deeply, mysteriously different for each of us. Because it's us. <laughs> it's like, of course it is. It's not like there's a silence that we're all accessing or something. Who we are and what we are is our unique, self-reflective way of being in relationship and receiving from that which is unsayable and yet we get to be the particular unique conduit for that kind of unsayableness that we can have access to be in relationship with because of who we are and they're just not separate things so then it feels like a homecoming of like oh well because it's language i'm pointing to something that's seemingly outside of myself which is the silence thing and then in saying it like this, it's that I get to sit, I get to be quiet, and I get to be with me. And in the being with me, I'm bringing gifts to myself. Like it's like a It's a deeper relationship with here that brings what I most long for. And yet so much of the time is spent outside of myself looking, seeking somewhere else for the thing that, that is continuously here right now. It's very um it's really something big and and deep and important and outside i think for certainly for me in my day-to-day -day life unless i really pay attention this part that you said about you said it in a slightly different way to the way i'm about to say it but life being um reciprocal like life is bringing us forth and we're bringing life forth both at the same time which is so hard to see because we feel so separate and we also we grown up in an entire philosophical background which starts with our separateness as being an unquestioned given we, I mean, we don't think we can even begin to see unless we really start to look 
how much of our ordinary ways of thinking and talking about what humans are and getting on with learning and are based upon an idea that's radically different to what we're talking about, what Randall Berry is talking about, that somehow we're, I'm a separate something given into a, um, put into a pre-existing world that is the way it is and then I have to just sort of make my way in it instead of life is bringing us forth and we're bringing the life forth simultaneously and everything's changing everything all the time the world's not pre-given in that fixed way and we're not pre-given in that way it's all relationship but that is really 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 hard to see <laughs> and the only the only um very simple and simplistic thing i can say about it is um this practice, Lizzie, of you and I doing this every Sunday morning for 101 weeks. I can see how that is changing me and changing the world. I don't mean changing the whole world all in one go, like everybody else's world, but changing many worlds, particularly including mine and yours, I know from speaking with you, that the world is different because we do this and we're different because the world is different because we do this because of this kind of practice. And the world of others is also different. And the conversations that I have and what people bring to me, all of that, I mean, I could go on and make a giant list. It's the same point as accept what comes from silence, make the best you can of it. Like prayers prayed back to the one who prays. And then everything that you said is right there. Yeah. It's very beautiful and it feels like there's a hell of a lot of possibility in it that's really different than there's this world and I just have to survive it or something in that narrative of separateness and diff I'm different to the world and I just it's just like a, a board game or something and I'm a packed piece that gets moved around oh so this feels like a very beautiful place to end Justin this kind of inquiry and spaciousness of opening and wondering and don't know about you, but like sometimes I feel like the struggle to really find the words that you actually mean is the kind of space that this naturally is. And this is why I just appreciate this space so much because it allows us to, it's reciprocal and that invites us to be in that space and then we are in that space and then that's the space that opens for us is to be in a genuine live a live inquiry as to what's here so everybody this has been turning towards life and we have bought you this lovely source by wendell berry which you can find on our website if you wanted to on turning towards life and you can also check out we are thirdspace.org if you're interested in anything to do with justin and i and our wider lovely community of people who are into these inquiries in the world we will see you next week for a source that justin's going to choose which is very exciting so thank you all for being with us for listening at whatever time wherever you are we very much appreciate you joining us mm. we'll see you next week thank you everyone bye bye, -bye.